Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Grandmaster Chinny in the 15-minute pool on ICC. This is a rematch against Chinny, uh, who is Grandmaster Humpy Konaru from India. And uh, she has the Indian flag back again. She didn't have this prior. Uh, it was actually a Russian flag for a little bit. But we had a very interesting game last time around in uh, the Botvinnik variation of the Semislav. And that was with a D4 opening, and this time she's playing E4. You know what? Let's go Scandinavian. <laughs> I don't think I played a 15 minute game with this opening, but it's my favorite opening. It's not the greatest opening in the world, but it's near and dear to my heart because I've been playing it my entire chess career. And I don't know when I'll have the opportunity to play it against a very strong grandmaster again. So why not now? We'll see if she plays the main line. I have a, a, a suspicion she will. So the main line is bishop c4, and now after bishop f5, bishop d2, e6, knight d5. Very curious if she'll play this. Last time we had a massive theoretical battle, so I'm a little hesitant to go into another theory fest with her. But sometimes you can't back down from that. Actually, oftentimes you can't back down from that, because if you do, you're probably playing an inferior line. Check. So as expected, she plays the main line. I'm going to take with the g-pawn. Take with a queen, uh, it kind of goes back and forth between what's better there, queen takes f6 or g takes f6. At the moment, I think g takes f6 is more reliable. I've never f truly felt comfortable with queen takes f6 because if queen takes f6, there's a line with queen e2 and then d5. That's pretty problematic for black. Uh, Castle's kingside is unusual here. Um, normally, they play bishop b3, but castle kingside, I'm just going to continue as normal. Knight d7. And I plan to castle queenside. I'll tell you guys right away. <laughs> if all goes according to plan, we're going to have an opposite side castling affair again. So she stakes out her territory, a4. Yeah, I think queen c7 is pretty reasonable right now. She can go a5, but we'll just see how she plays the resulting position. The nice thing about the Scandinavian is that if you play it regularly, like you'll know for a fact that you have vastly more experience in the position after move three, after queen a5 and move three, than your opponent. Like I know every time I get that position, which is probably a good half of my games in the Scandinavian, if not more, probably closer to, I don't know, 75%. Um, I know that unless <laughs> they're a secret specialist in this opening, that I have way more experience in this line than they do. They might know like what the best line is, but I know I've played more games in it than they have. So C3 is interesting. So that, that props up B4. She's kind of anticipating that I'm going to castle queenside. She's already starting to probe with the queenside pawns. I think that's okay for me. I mean, let's just play bishop D6. I might play rook G8 and uh, try to force some sort of concession around her king. Like if she were to play H3 now, so that bishop takes H2 is never a threat. I can go rook g8 and I'll be threatening bishop takes h3. So, I'm not unhappy with this position. I somewhat learned my lesson last time against her uh, when I went into one of the sharpest lines in chess and she just knew it extremely well. That game was very interesting. If you haven't checked it out, please go do that. Just want to see if she has played. No, nope, she really hasn't played any recent games. I think her last game might have been against me. She only has seven 15 minute games in total, and that's about the number I remembered from our last meeting a few days ago. Oh, and I didn't know it at the time of last video. I thought uh, Grandmaster Konaru was over 2,600. Fide, but she went down a little bit. She has been over 2,600 before, uh, but she's by, I think she's 2,581 Fide at the moment, which uh, puts her as the number three female player in the world behind uh, one Ho Yifan and one Judith Polgar. <laughs> so she's in pretty good company right there. She's thinking a little bit. I think this bodes well for me.
trying to anticipate what moves she might play here. Because rook g8 is kind of a nasty little thread. I mean, let's say theoretically I do get rook g8 in and she sidesteps with her king, king h1. Um, I I could maybe probe further with a move like bishop g4 or bishop e4. So she plays rook e1, just lining up against my king. And one of her ideas is that if rook g8 right now, she'll go knight h4 and just pitch the pawn on uh, h2. I wonder if that's the plan. So let's say rook g8, knight h4, bishop takes h2, check, king here. Hard to say. I mean, I think castling is probably the most normal move right now. Probably going to do it. Yeah, let's do it. I could play rook g8 first, but I feel more comfortable getting my king out of the x-ray on the e-file. She does play h3, so now what happens if rook hg8? She's just going to play king h1 after that? Guess we'll find out because this is too thematic to pass up, and I, I virtually gain a tempo by playing this because of the bishop takes h3 threat. Maybe her plan is to go king h1 and then stick this bishop back on f1. That could be a viable option. And say, how are you going to get through the g2 h3 pawns with my bishop backing them up? Yeah, I somehow get the sense that that's what she's up to. Uh, I think knight b6 is still pretty good, though, even though it forces the bishop backwards. Let's say knight b6, bishop f1, knight d5. would be coming for the f4 square. I don't know, though. I also would like to double up and attack this pawn like rook g6 or rook g7. Just a little leery about knight h4. Because she can do that now. Maybe I should play bishop f4. That would potentially give up my dark square bishop. I mean, I'm offering a trade, but... Yeah, let's go bishop f4. I'm trying to um, explain why I like this move. My bishop and queen battery is not going to be worth as much now that the pawn is on h3. If I could change around my queen and my bishop, I would love that because I would have uh, threats of bringing my queen into h2 later. But it's too hard to engineer that. So that's why I like bishop f4, just looking for a swap. And if I can get my queen into f4 too in the process of the trade, then it's operating closer to white's king. It'll probably compel her actually to want to trade queens with something like queen d2 and offer a queen trade if we were to swap bishops right now. f2 is a weak point in her position now that she's played her rook over to e1 or her king here. Okay, she just plays knight h4. I could take on d2, she'll take with a queen. Probably not much doing there. Bishop g6 blocks the file, but it might be necessary. I can't reasonably allow knight takes f5 and take on triple isolated pawns. That would be awful. Sacking on h3 is not sound. Okay, bishop g6 it is. So she'll just hold this bishop hostage. I'd be surprised if she took here. She'll probably just leave the knight on h4 and either take on g6 at a more opportune time or not even take that bishop at all. Time-wise, I'm doing all right. So where will my play come from next? One thing I've done before in a position like this is I played f5 and then knight f6 and then bishop h5, which looks kind of ridiculous because f5 blocks in your own light square bishop. But actually is like pretty effective. So I might do that. I have half a mind to do that. Yeah, that's interesting. I can also play bishop 
Uh, can I play bishop h5? I don't think so. Bishop h5 trying to deflect their queen. Queen takes h5, bishop takes d2. But bishop h5, she can play bishop takes f4, hitting my queen. And if queen takes f4, queen takes h5, wins material. Hmm. Okay, this is gonna, <laughs> this looks really weird, but it's an idea I've used before. I actually played a game against uh, the Israeli Grandmaster Vitali Golod at the World Open 2002, I think, where I used the same idea against my opponent's Castle Kingside uh, option in the Scandinavian, this exact line, actually. Okay, b5. So if I take, what are you going to do? You have to take with your bishop, right? Because if a takes, the bishop on c4 is hanging. I'd first insert bishop takes d2, but then I'd take on c4. could also play c5 to try to keep the position closed, but that doesn't seem right. It seems better to take. Yes, let us take. She does take with the bishop, and now knight f6 is the planned move. Also, I get my knight within striking distance of e4, because remember I said that f2 square is weak? So I think I stand a decent chance of proving that uh, she might have as many problems with her king as I might have with mine. I have more pieces operating in the vicinity of her king. She has more of a pawn storm going on, so it's different types of attacks. A pawn storm is the modus operandi, in these positions with opposite side castling, but sometimes if you get good enough peace play, you can compensate for a lack of a pawn storm. Hmm, she's pretty relentless. So if I play knight e4, what are you gonna do? I'd be attacking your bishop and f2. If take on f4, I take with my queen. That just looks massive for me. Yeah, that can't be good for white. Seems she's almost playing a little recklessly. I'm getting all this play. I could take on d2 first and then play knight e4, but even though that attacks c3, I'm not going to take the c3 pawn more than likely with my king here. I mean, knight e4 immediately just seems good. I don't understand what she plays against that. And maybe an exchange stack, I don't know. It's the only thing I can see. Bishop h5 is also possible. No, I would think that this move is just good. Yeah, she instantly sacked the exchange. Okay. I can play b6 and keep it closed. Yeah, let's do that. Shut the position down. I mean, it's annoying that this pawn on a6 will always make me cautious about my king, but an exchange is an exchange. She can't follow up with c4 because I would take on d4. So dare I say that uh, Miss Konaru, Mrs. Konaru, I think she's married now, um, has played a little bit recklessly in this one. It'll revolve around whether my, my king is safe enough in the long term. I mean, with this material edge, position's obviously boating well, but if my king proves to be weak and she can organize an attack, then it's anybody's game. It's nice that this knight is so out of play on h4. And it seems like the only fate for this knight now is to exchange itself for the bishop on g6. So that is nice for me. The light square bishop doesn't have much to bite on. And I think the most dangerous thing that could happen is if she was able to play c4, c5, or if this queen were able to get somewhere very deep in my position or threatened to get deep in the position. I just don't see how that would happen, especially with me having a pawn on e4 now. I don't really have a threat in this position. Uh, if anything, I'd probably just want to move my king over to b8 to secure it a bit more. 
Tentatively, I'd like to play king b8, uh, maybe rook c8, and then take on d2 and try to win the c3 pawn. That would be a simple plan I could try to follow. King b8 is just a tremendously useful move, though, so I'd like to play that. Yeah, hard to offer her advice in this position. It's not, uh, I don't see a move for white off the top of my head that looks head and shoulders above any other move. She needs to open the position. She can't maintain the status quo and expect to hold the game. She's down material. And when you're down material for nothing, you have to play dynamically to compensate. Okay, rook a4, that's, that's a reasonable move. Um, not sure why I didn't see that move actually, but yeah, she's trying to come to c4. Oh, actually, is that worse for me than I thought? It could be. Because if I play king b8, rook c4, queen d6, she has rook c6. And then my queen can't stay guarding the bishop. That would be annoying. So am I going to have to take on d2, rook c4, and then like move my bishop back? Uh, I wouldn't want to have to do that. <laughs> Might be necessary. Hmm. Because rook c4 is a huge threat, there's no doubt about that. Could also maybe play rook d5. Rook d5, rook c4, rook takes b5. Could that be a safer way to get a bishop and rook for the queen? Depends which bishop I want. So if bishop takes d2, rook c4, I'd be letting this bishop survive. Rook d5, rook c4, rook takes b5. I keep them with a dark square bishop. Let's look at that one again. Rook c4, or rook d5, rook c4, rook takes b5, rook takes c7, bishop takes c7, c4 could be annoying right there. I don't like the look of that. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe I will take on d2 and just get that dark square bishop. I think I will. Hope I'm not making the wrong call with that. So rook c4, and now I'm thinking bishop f4. Can also take on c4 first, but bishop f4 seems better. Or maybe bishop g5. Hmm. Do I want to force her to move this knight? The light squares around my king are going to become weak. Hmm. 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 Tough call. Okay, bishop f4, rook takes c7, bishop takes c7. Just worried about this diagonal. But how can she get into that diagonal? It's tough to do that. Queen e2 or something? I feel like I need to make this knight move. Taking on c3 would be too ridiculous here. Okay, I'm going to play bishop g5. It's 
frame of this. She might not do that, but because I, you know, I can't get out of the pin anyway, so she could try to um, exploit the pin a little bit longer. Maybe even with queen a4 after a trade on g6, but I think I have a defense against that. Check. Hmm. I'm thinking like definitely white would like to get the queen in to c4 and then to c6, but if like queen b3 or queen a4, I can always play rook d6 if necessary. Ah, that move is the idea bishop takes h4, queen f4 check, but I can just play rook d6, at least for now. So maybe not. Now, the dark squares around my king are going to get weak if I swap for that knight on h4. Hmm. Yeah, this is not, not a good development. It's like, I kind of have to take the knight. But after, let's say, um, you know, queen f4 check... Rook d6, queen takes h4. She'll just be threatening to come into e7 with devastating consequences. I do have rook d5 in this position, don't I? Rook d5, there's c4 though. Doesn't help my cause. Yeah, I might be losing here, unfortunately. Hmm. I don't see a good defense. Bishop e7, knight takes g6, rook takes g6, queen takes e4, rook d5. It's always just too easily met by c4. This is painful. <laughs> Especially since I thought my position was so good. Misevaluation of the position. Yeah, I have to do something. I'm just going to take. I really don't have a good choice, though. So now the threat of coming into e7 is just decisive. Guess I'll go king d6. She can check on f4 and then come into c7 now. I'm totally on the run. Yeah, and when she wins a7, I think it's pretty much over. Because b6 falls, and even if I can stop the promotion of the a pawn for a time, it's not going to work out too well. c4, huh? Yeah, it's probably pretty good, too. <laughs> okay, I'll just go here, I guess. And I have very little time on my clock as well. There's not much to do. I wonder if I just completely misassess the consequences of rook takes e4. I didn't connect it to the rook a4 move. <laughs> this is two games now she's got me with uh, a rook moving up the a file. In our previous game it was rook a6 check that I underestimated. <laughs> now it's this move. Rook check. a4. All right, king on the run, let's do this. She can take a7, I take d4. Glimmer of hope, maybe? 
Or maybe she takes a7, I play e3. That would be interesting if that actually held by some miracle. You know what, I have nothing to lose, so let's try it. Idea is pawn takes and then bishop e4, trying to attack g2. Mm, she can probably play queen c7 to handle this. Yeah, that'll be good enough to win. Because if I take on g2 with the rook, then queen f4. It was worth a shot, though. I don't think rook takes d4 really did much for me, so... This way I at least get to check her. Because checks are very important, right? <laughs> yeah, queen c7 is just a good move right here. So I really want to take with a rook, but I don't have time to after that queen c7 move. Oh, she takes that way. She's playing more greedy than I thought she would. All right, let's Check. take here, king g1. Running towards the center. Yep. Okay. Now, how do I get my pieces involved. No discoveries with the bishop look any good here. Hmm. Okay, let's go bishop e4. You can play king f1. King f1 looks good. King here would allow check and then doubling up, so that's not as strong. Hmm. Yeah, my time is about to expire, but... Okay, I'll just do this. There's not really much to be done. Like queen d6 or queen c7 once again. I'm a couple tempos behind where I need to be. d5. Time warning. It's probably also a good move. Okay, let's just come in. And if check, king f5. Very much on my last legs, but... Check. King on f5, doing the dirty work. <laughs> she can probably take, because then if I take with my pawn, there's queen c5, right? I would not have played it like she is right now. Like, now I'm actually threatening checkmate. Check. Let's see if I can just run. Wait a second. King d1. Man, oh man. I mean, amazingly, Check. I'm actually, like, not doing too bad. She has to play... Check. Hmm. Check. This is kind of funny. I'm going to lose on time, though. Check. <laughs> yeah. I'm still Check. going to lose. Let's pre move this. Ooh, let me get this move in. Let's pre move that. <laughs> Checkmate. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> That was a ridiculous ending to that game. Um, yeah, I mean, I would have wrote me off a thousand different ways, as I'm sure you guys all did. I was thinking about resigning at various times at the end here. I wonder if she, like, just... I don't know what she was thinking towards the end, running her king all the way up to h8. But there were so many easy wins that she just passed up. Like, back here, like I was saying, um, you know... For instance, when I when I played this e3 take bishop e4 move, I thought just queen c7. Because if, if she can threaten to check me on the dark squares, I'm toast. Like queen e5 check threatening to fork the king and the bishop. Let's go take a look at it. I'll be very curious to see what the engine has to say about knight e4. And then rook takes e4. 
I mean, I missed rook a4 in reply, but nonetheless, I'll be curious to see what the computer says. So knight d5 is the main line in this position. Check. And I was saying that queen takes f6, in my opinion, is not as comfortable for black uh, because of this line with queen e2. And then let's say bishop g4. And is it d5 right away or is it castle? I always forget. I think it's d5 right away. So white can enforce this breakthrough because of the pin on the e-pawn. And then after c takes d5, bishop takes d5, knight d7. White does not want to take on b7 because of queen takes b2, forking the queen and the bishop. So instead, they... Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I got the move order wrong. It's actually bishop takes f3 first to forcibly double white's pawns, double isolate them. G takes f3, then take here. Bishop takes d5, knight d7. Same thing applies if bishop takes b7, black takes on b2, forking the rook and the bishop. So consequently, they usually castle here. And then black is supposed to castle, which looks completely crazy because your king is totally open. And then white plays bishop e4. And then there's this move, queen e5. I've tried to defend this position a couple times. Um, white is just better, I'll tell you that. The bishops and the open lines more than make up for the fact that white has double isolated pawns. I think according to theory, black can like weasel their way out of this and like maybe hope to gain a draw, but it's kind of depressing. So that's why g takes f6 is my choice here, and it's, it's more enterprising. Then castle's king side. Yeah, this is interesting. The main line runs bishop b3, protecting the c2 pawn so that white can go queen e2 and then castle long. So she castled short though, and I think these next few moves are, you know, fairly normal looking for both sides. She's anticipating which side I will cast along, and she's already building up her pawn storm over there. h3, and now rook g8. Yep, and king h1. So. Oh, she actually sent me a tell. <laughs> she said, never trust a friend to finish a game with advice. Do not lose on time. Haha, <laughs> good game. <laughs> I'll show you guys. You guys probably can't see it, but... That was just a funny tell that she said sent there. <laughs> now I'm gonna have to resize this board. Yeah, I wonder. Um, I wonder if someone was like, "Oh, just play fast," and you're gonna flag them. And she tried to do that and lost. <laughs> so King H1. Um, I'm gonna tell her thanks for the game. Just a second here. Not often that uh, <laughs> a very strong grandmaster talks to you on ICC. So, okay. So after bishop f4, um, knight h4 was played, forcing my bishop back to g6. And like I said, she can try to hold this bishop hostage for a little bit and never take it, as happened in the game. And that's kind of annoying for me because I would prefer clarity. I'd prefer if she actually took here and didn't really give me a choice. But you know, she can definitely play this move with no intention of taking the bishop right away. So she played b4. I went f5. So as I said, I played this game against Vitaly Golod, Grandmaster Golod, back in the 2002 World Open, I think. And I did the same thing, and it was a draw. f5, knight f6, and bishop h5 is the plan to activate the light square bishop. The knight is nice on, on f5, on f6 rather. It's in range of e4 and it's better than its current post on d7. So b5, I take, she takes, knight f6, a5, and now critical moment. So allowing knight e4, I guess it's not as bad as I thought it was, at least the, according to the first impressions of the engine. Not as bad for white. It's still plenty good for black, but a6. Yeah, interesting. Um, I don't know how I blanked on the rook a4 move. Maybe I have to like watch my uh, rook moves up the file. <laughs> those, are, those are always tricky moves because most of the time you're used to rooks moving laterally along the ranks, but up the file rook moves. Yeah, now this is just strong. I mean, I felt like when I played a6, I'm just 
or when she played a6, I'm responding to it with a very standard move, b6, trying to keep it close. But yeah, after rook a4, I'm in trouble. So I have to take on d2 and just let her take Check. here. And then well, I was thinking the engine was going to say hide your king. I think I prefer king b8 to king takes b7. And sometimes you can do this. You can use your opponent's pawn as shelter for your king. If you're getting attacked on the side of the board and uh, you have this defensive mechanism, it's worth considering. Take, and now rook d6. I guess I am organizing a defense here. The most important thing, as I said, when we got into this position, is king safety. If I can keep my king safe, that material should tell in the long run. In black's favor, I'm up the exchange. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of amazing. I mean, b6 is a mistake. It just looks like such a normal move, but for concrete reasons, it's bad. If she had played rook a4 here, what's the difference? I guess the difference is now I can play king b8, because after rook c4... I have this. In the game, a6 and b6 were included, and rook c6 was the problem. My c6 square was compromised. So, a6, b6, rook a4. Yeah, now I regrettably took on d2. The other line I was looking at was this one. Rook here, rook c4. I take her bishop. And then I think I was mainly Check. looking at this. And then c4. I thought this was bad for me. Maybe not, though. Rook b2. Somehow it seems like I'm not coordinated whatsoever. The computer thinks this might be okay for black. I'm not totally convinced by that. But this position's sneaky. Like, after uh, rook takes b5, you see the to engine's top suggestion, queen f1. You don't even have to take the, the queen right away. That's a very sneaky move, setting up a threat on the rook and also threatening bishop takes f4 too. So if I were to play rook b2, I would just be losing after this. So this position is just suddenly a minefield for black. It's not easy to defend. So here, rook c4. She played this part of the game very well. Check. Take, take, queen g4 was strong. I honestly thought I was just lost here, and I think I am. Rook d5 looks nice, but c4 comes, and I can't move my rook somewhere that will hold the bishop. Like All these squares are covered, either by her pawns or by her knight. So I'm just dead. And, yeah, I mean, if I play something random like, let's say, bishop e7, she can take on g6, I'm taking back and she wins e4 and gets in here or here, I can just resign right away if that happens. I need my king to try to escape to the king side like I attempted in the game. So that's what I was trying to do with king d6. It's still very bad. I thought she would just Check. do this and then go Check. here and go take this pawn. But she stalled for a couple moves. c4, I didn't really get that move. If anything, I feel like c4 just blocks the bishop, but I know she's totally winning still after that. Hmm, rook c8 is not so bad. Rook c8 is... Ah, okay, because then if, if queen Check. f4, I can move my king, and I'm actually covering the c7 square. That's crucial. And I'm still in a lot of trouble after d5. Um, so here, I've talked about this imbalance before in games, but uh, queen versus two rooks. If the queen has a lot of pawn targets, the queen is usually better than the two rooks. If the rooks are coordinated, then you usually prefer the rooks. One thing I didn't mention, though, previously is king safety. If there's a king safety question, then... Uh, that first piece of advice kind of takes a back seat because white's king is perfectly safe here and mine is not. So if my king was somehow safe, I mean, maybe I'd be okay, but my dark squares are uh, so heavily compromised, it's uh, it's almost a moot point, like how coordinated, coordinated my rooks are. Also, she has a strong light square bishop too, restricts my play. So here I played bishop f5 pretty desperately. Check. She gave a check. I went king e7. Check. Check. King f6. Yeah, now e3, only chance. I could also play this, but I just felt like she was going to take, and check. I have a spike check I can give, and it's it's not enough. e3 can be met by queen takes e3 now. I'm not going to be able to play bishop e4. So I think this is a pretty good practical chance, like play this move, get the bishop to a good square while the queen is sidelined temporarily. Here, bishop e4. She took on b6. I would have played this move. I don't even think you need to take the b6 pawn. I think just do that, and then if take, 
And I think a king here or here would be fine. King h2 is fine. I guess I can move all the way back, though. That's a good point. At least I'm threatening to come in. Queen Check. f4, king e7, queen h4. Check. Yeah, that's a nasty move. So if king f8, I lose my rook on d8. So f6, queen Check. takes h7, king d6. Yeah, I'm firmly on the run, aren't I? e4, blocking the scope of the bishop. It's just a matter of time. Like, white just has to display some accuracy. My king is too unsafe. So my dream would be if I had a chance to be able to play rook takes g2. That would be the best thing in the world. And it crossed my mind that maybe I could do this. Check. And then play king g7, but I don't have enough good discoveries. I don't have a discovery that would like win their queen or anything. Um, oh, that's kind of funny though. I actually am threatening a perpetual, like rook g3, king h2, rook back to g2, check. So it's possible that h4 is the only good move in this position. That might be the case. I'd better move like bishop c6 also wins. <laughs> bishop takes and then d5, that's probably the best way to win. Cutting off the coordination between bishop and rook. Check. Regardless, yeah, there's several ways why she can wrap this up, including the way that she played like this, just running away with her king, but she needlessly allowed me to coordinate. Again, I would play a safety move like this. Threaten the rook, stop me from bringing this rook in to, you know, one of these squares. D5 really didn't do much because I can hide my king on f5. Check. I'm still losing, but... Somehow, gradually, this <laughs> actually became pretty good. Yeah, now I'm winning all of a sudden. So the point where she blew the game was, I guess, right here. It was kind of set up that way after queen d4, but even up through here, she's still winning. King e1, and I guess escape this way. It's more complicated now, but... She went here. Check. Check. I thought I should maybe have a mating net, but I couldn't find it. Rook c2. Now I'm threatening this. Checkmate. So she went here. Check. Rook g1 check. Here. No checkmate still, but check. I do win the bishop. Check. And at this point I had four seconds left. And I didn't see the mate in seven, check. wherever the mate in seven is. How does the mate in seven go? Check. Rook here, check. What if king here? Uh, quiet move, rook h1. That would be a hard move to see with uh, <laughs> any amount of time that's like under a minute under clock. <laughs> Well, I think with 30 seconds you could find that move, but certainly not 5 or 4 or 3. Check. I mean, my two rooks plus bishop and also my king even participating should be enough to win, but... If she would have just slowed down and done anything sensible, she wins here. Check. I was just playing something, trying to drum up a miracle, and lo and behold, it actually happened. <laughs> it's funny watching the evaluation just swing wildly back and forth. Yeah, like here I missed rook f3, just setting up rook takes h3 mate. There's not a whole lot she can do about that. So the queen is just um, not in a good position to check my king. My king is perfectly safe on f5. If h4, I just go here. And all she can do is play a spike check or two. So. Rook g6, yeah. <laughs> Now I was on the winning track. Kind of. <laughs> and then e5. e5 was the key move. If I didn't have e5, I was going down the gutter. And I knew here she had to take on e4 with check. Um, I was just pre-moving king h8 in the hope that she wouldn't, and she didn't. But, yeah, queen takes check. e4 take, and I guess she can, like, avert mate. And I might have flagged. I probably would have flagged, actually. I think I would have. Because it's not clear totally how to set up a mate, even though there's a mate in three. Like... Yeah, something Check. like this here. Um, or g5 is kind of tricky. I'm not sure I would have done that. I probably would have played this, h4, and then gone here. But I don't know if I could execute all of that in the amount of time. Probably not. So, wow. Yeah, very interesting game. Um, happy to have got a win in my favorite opening against a very strong player. But... I hope this was instructive for you guys and that you enjoyed it. And I'll be back tomorrow with another 15-minute game. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.